There we go. I forgot to hit go live on YouTube. So since we're joining, you're joining in about a minute in, this is a live stream about classic horns. Classic horns sound great. Many of them sound great. They have a very unique tone that's unmatched by any new or modern horn. Um, however, there are physical issues that happen with the horn. There are seams that can crack. There are leaks that it can appear. Many times older horns have patches and I know many people are, are unsure as to whether to be concerned about patches or not. And we're gonna discuss all of that today. And this is a great time to be just talking about this because at Houghton Horns right now, we have a lot of classic horns available, a lot of great classic horns available that are hard to find. But first, I'm actually gonna show you one of my horns. This is a 1952 Geyer horn. Normally, if you've watched these live streams before, you know I usually play a Jacob Metlin horn. And that's a newer horn, it's only a couple of years old, and that is my main horn. However, I love this Geyer style horn, and it I play it often, even if it's not officially my main horn. So I'll play this a little bit, and then we can compare some of the other classic horns behind me. Man, this horn is fun to play. <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm, th I'm tempted to play it as my main horn. However, in order to get this horn into a good playing condition, I can talk about some of the usual pitfalls. So on this horn, there were cracks. There are cracks that were appearing in the bend here. Because the metal is seamed together, so it's a flat sheet of metal that's formed around a tube and that it's hammered into place and a, by, via a technique called brazing, it's brazed together. That brazing was starting to get old and starting to release. There were little pinholes here that needed to be repaired. As you can see, this is not the original leak pipe. This is actually a pipe that was designed by Dennis Houghton. Um, combines the best qualities of an original uh, uh, Carl Geyer pipe with a C. F. Schmidt. And we have a C. F. Schmidt we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, the valves had to be rebuilt. They were rebuilt by our technician Christopher Reddick, one of the best in the business. Valves can wear. So valves are just a, are a solid block of brass inside of each one of these valve casings. And that block of brass can wear over time. When it wears, it doesn't contain the air anymore and air starts to leak places that it shouldn't be. Um, when that happens, the horn will feel too loose and it will start to uh, be out of tune. So. You, you don't want a horn with leaky valves. Back to the lead pipe. Most of these older horns have yellow brass lead pipes and yellow brass is susceptible to red rot. So on older horns, if it has the original lead pipe, it's not uncommon to see red rot on the lead pipe. Red rot is when the zinc leaches out of the alloy and that causes pinholes and leaks in the metal and it's irreversible. So when you have red rot, that means that part is going to eventually need replacing. 
and red rock can take place quickly or it can take place slowly. Slowly, your horn might last for years before the part needs to be replaced. Um, quickly, it, um, maybe only a year or two. Another unique thing about this horn is the diameter of the bell. In some ways, it's actually hard to find a case for this horn because the diameter of this bell is far wider than most modern horns. So let's talk about this horn. This is a C.F. Schmidt Weimar Berlin. Let me see if I can get the engraving in the camera here. If you look closely, you can see C.F. Schmidt Weimar Berlin. The C.F. Schmidt wrap was the very first wrap of double horn. And uh, to many collectors and aficionados, it is still the best, most efficient wrap. And that's due to the openness of it. It minimizes it minimizes sharp turns. However, the big downside of a C.F. Schmidt is that it's not very ergonomic due to the fact that it uses a piston change valve. Now, many manufacturers have tried solutions to make a C.F. Schmidt feel more comfortable. I haven't found one that I've personally liked so far. But the ergonomic challenges in many ways are worth overcoming due to the, due to the awesome sound that C.F. Schmitz get. They tend to handle extremely well and they have a Geyer-like tone. So the tone and the style would be more like a Geyer style horn, yellow brass, smaller tapered valve, but still silky and smooth and let me just play it for you so we're gonna that seems to be a common thing in these live streams for me, picking up the horn and playing it without pulling out any of the slides. Not the best thing to do. So yeah, this horn just has a nice, rich, smoky tone. However, again, you need to watch out for horns that we sell. We go over and we make sure that they work here properly. We also, unless a horn is marked as is on our website, we warranty our used horns one year. So if you buy it and you find something's wrong with it or there's something you may have missed, you can have confidence to know that we'll go back and we will If something goes wrong with a horn, I sorry, I forgot the mic again. Um, something goes wrong with a horn that you bought from us, even if it's older, as long as it's not marked as is on our site, 
with our one year warranty, we'll go back and we'll make sure that it is in perfect working condition for you. While we're talking about C.F. Schmidt horns, horns other than C.F. Schmidt use this type of wrap. For example, I put it here. Carl Geyer. So this is the second Carl Geyer horn of this live stream, but it is a CF Schmidt wrap, as you can tell by the piston change valve. Carl Geyer made many C.F. Schmidt wraps. In fact, we have three of them at the shop right now. And it's said, I've heard rumors of this, though I'm not going to say it as an absolute fact because so many things in the horn community are just hearsay, but that Carl Geyer liked the C.F. Schmidt wrap even more than his own Geyer style wrap, but that he wanted, and that he wanted his Geyer style wrap to be like the C.F. Schmidt, but more comfortable ergonomically. One thing this horn is missing that the C.F. Schmidt had was a hand crutch. A hand crutch can really help to make these horns a bit more comfortable to hold. Without the hand crutch for me, this becomes extremely uncomfortable. And you could have, might have noticed in some passages there, it seemed like I missed different fingerings and things weren't extremely clear and that was because I was struggling with having to hold up the horn and finger at the same time. However, again, that's a super simple fix. You would just attach a hand rest here and it would help support your hand. This is an old Crispa style horn. Crispa style horns are what the Kine 8D and Kine 8D like horns were originally based on. As you can see, the change valve here is at the top. Although it is reversed, that shows that this is an older Crispa style horn, uh, likely from the 1930s. and they have a crisper wrap, meaning the bell is larger than the other horns I've played. Uh, larger bells equal a broader sound. However, it's still made out of yellow brass. As far as I know, it was Khan that popularized nickel silver as a metal for these horns.
you know, in some ways this is something to keep in mind if you stop by our shop to try out horns. Because we regularly go through and oil and grease the horns, when you pull them off of the wall, they tend to have all of the slides pushed in. This horn is definitely different from the ones I've tried so far, but still, still has that. I don't, I don't know if it's the aging of the metal or the old techniques that were used, but these horns tend to be easy to play. They respond quite well. They have a fun factor in the playability of it. And they have a very unique, very good sounds. All of them do. This is a Knopf double. Knopf style horns are related to Geyer style horns. And we don't know whether Geyer or Knopf made their horn first. They seem to come out at the same time. They both studied in Mark Nukirchen, and of course, Carl Geyer immigrated to the U.S. and worked in Chicago. That's the Carl Geyer Chicago marking that you see on many of his horns, while Knopf uh, stayed in Germany. So, but the designs are extremely similar. The wrap is extremely similar. This one is a little different from most Knopf style horns because the F branch, instead of just going around the outside, it goes up and around the inside. And what that allows is for the circle to be smaller than it is on most Geyer or Knopf style horns. So it's a very compact horn to hold. Another thing I wanna point out on this horn, though many of the other horns I tried have the same issue, is a patch. I'm going to switch to the other camera. So if you look very carefully here, you can see that another sheet of metal has been soldered onto the top of this tube. Patches are normally used to fix leaks in a horn. So if a pinhole has appeared and, um, and there's a leak in the horn, you can use a patch to cover it up. You can also uh, use a patch to reinforce weak areas of the horn. So for example, a common place to see a patch, this horn doesn't have one, but here on the inside of the bell, uh, this one, the bell is in great shape because it's been replaced by a uh, modern Engelbert Schmidt uh, bell flare. But since uh, your hand is here all the time and your, the oils and sweat on your hand is acidic, it can tend to eat through the horn at that point and thus you need a patch to reinforce it before the metal fails. So the question is, should you avoid horns that have patches? I would say no. A well done patch, so that means patches that aren't hilariously big, 
patch is done by a skilled technician who only use the patch that is as big as needed can don't mess with the sound of the horn that much. Now any metal that you add to a horn makes it not exactly the same as it was before. But I've played horns pre and post patch many times and it does not make a big difference. So if you see a horn and you like it and it has some patches on it, I don't think that's a reason to avoid it or to, to run scared from that horn. I would be concerned if there were thin spots on a horn that have not been patched or if there are lots of other thin spots in the horn. But if you check the metal and most of the metal is fine, but there's a handful of patches, that's not anything to, to worry about. the thing you know I think I played that entire horn with my vocal mic on I'm gonna play it again with a little instrument mic <laughs> You know, and I'm really curious to see which one of these horns you guys are liking the most. Which one did you like the sound of the best? One of the things I haven't mentioned about these horns yet is the incredible deals that you can get on them for an older horn. Most of these horns play at the premium, not, not most of them, all of them are premium horns that play at a premium level. So premium horns would brand new would be eight, nine, ten thousand dollars or more. But if you take a look at some of the current prices on these horns, the Geyer Schmidt is seven thousand dollars. The CF Schmidt is fifty five hundred dollars. That's an incredible deal for, for a premium level horn. That, that really is. You're not going to find another horn that plays as well as the CF Schmidt for $5,500. If you have a large hand and you can handle the ergonomics of that, that's a great deal. The Knopf horn I played, it's only $59.50. The reason for these low prices is a lot of times people are a little skeptical of older horns, of horns made in the 30s and 40s and 50s. And yes, they may have maintenance issues that other horns won't have, but it's not going to be $5,000 of maintenance issues to get you to the price of a new horn at $10,000. So these are, if you're a serious player, you, you should take a look at these. Or even if you're a high schooler who's coming in to look at 
a five or six thousand dollar horn you can get a lot of money you can get a lot of bang for your buck by going for you know a Knopf or a cf schmidt or this geyer schmidt or the crispa which is which is not up on our website yet but will be in the next day or two So let me see if there are any questions. Uh, let me check YouTube chat. Facebook chat is always very hard to find. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions here. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to play through all the horns back to back to back so that uh, everyone here, everyone on the stream can hear what they all sounded like. I'll start off with the Knopf again. Moving back to the C.F. Schmidt. This is the Geyer Schmidt. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
This is the CRISPR Airfort. And to be completionist, here is my uh, Geyer Geyer wrap horn. I'll check here one more time for any questions. I have a question. What's my right hand position? So my right hand position is just standard flat position. Thumb on top, as straight as possible. And I put that off to the side. I know some players recommend putting it in the middle. For example, if anyone's seen uh, Engelbert Schmidt's position on uh, Engelbert Schmidt's video on hand position, he basically recommends this position, but down the middle of the horn. I prefer the stability that comes from having it on the side. And I don't like the sound when the hand position is covered. I feel like the sound needs to be as open as possible, therefore the hand position needs to be as open as possible. Okay, and that seems to be it for questions. Thank you once again for joining me. Just as a reminder, all these horns, except for my Geyer, are available at Houghton Horns right now. We go through all of our horns to make sure there are no leaks, nothing going wrong with it. If you're gonna buy an older horn um, outside of a shop setting, you should bring it to your local repair person as you would do with a used car that you're buying from a private seller. They need to uh, check the compression, check the metal, check everything to make sure that nothing is going wrong with the instrument and that everything is as it as it should be. Um, pricing on these horns are usually pretty good. Uh, sometimes you have um, a horn that has um, a pedigree. So it was used by some famous player in some famous orchestra and that can raise the price of a horn. Um, old Geyer style Geyer horns are not all of that cheap. For example, if I was going to list mine today, it would probably be around eleven or twelve thousand dollars. So 
not as um, affordable as the other horns just because of the demand for that kind of horn. Um, just if you're buying from a private seller, buyer beware. Have it checked by a repair shop. Have it checked by another professional player to make sure you're getting a very good uh, instrument. Uh, tune in on Friday. I'll be joined by Mark Houghton again, and we're going to be talking about mouthpieces. I don't know if many of you know, but me and Mark Houghton designed most of the Houghton and Varus mouthpiece lines. It, they all came from, a, from several car rides that we took together back and forth to Houston. And we can talk a little bit more about how that came about and how we went through our process to use the mouthpieces that we use today. Thank you everyone and I'll see you on Friday.